Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Good morning, my sisters and brothers in Christ. I greet you in the name of our great God and Savior, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I cannot believe that this is January the 16th. We, we've gone through half of the month already. I remember when uh, January 1 came in, New Year's, I was celebrating New Year's. I was sharing it with my wife and with my grandson. He was hanging out with us. And now it's already the middle of the month. That is incredible. We've celebrated, my sisters and brothers in Christ, uh, the Epiphany Sunday where the Magi went to visit Jesus, the two-year-old or a little bit older as we believe. We've also uh, engaged in celebrating remembering our baptism. Now we are in what we love to say as clergy ordinary time. That's where there is uh, no great celebrations going on until we get into the, the Lenten season. And so once Lent takes shape, we will celebrate Lent. We'll go through the 40 days of Lent and then we'll celebrate Easter. But now we're in ordinary time. There is nothing for the pastor to do, nothing at all. I'm just joking, but we are in uh, the second Sunday after Epiphany, which is ordinary time for us, where we just preach general messages. And so um, today we're going to share uh, what we believe God is asking of us from a spiritual perspective so we can look at our spiritual gifts and talk about those. I want to remind you on, the, on, on next Sunday, the 23rd, we're going to celebrate by uh, consecrating the leadership in the church. This is one of those things you may not have ever engaged in it, but there is a, a liturgy in our book of worship where we can celebrate the leadership, those who will be serving on different ministries and committees throughout the year of 2022. We like to consecrate you. We'd like to uh, go through a liturgy where we say you're going to be working in the church for the Lord. And so we'll do that on uh, next Sunday, the 23rd. Amen. A couple of other announcements I have I'd like to share with you. We continue with our uh, Bible conversation. Our next Bible conversation uh, will take place on January, Wednesday, January the 19th. You're invited to come. We're, we've started a new book. We've started uh, looking at uh, Philip Yancey's book in the Jesus I Never Knew. It is a great read. Come be part of our Bible conversation. Also, Love Thursday will take place this coming Thursday, the, the 20th of, of January, and we'll go down to uh, Food Lion. We're going to go down to Food Lion and bless the workers down there with um, letting them know that we appreciate their service, we appreciate what they do. Also, um, if you would like to uh, be part of the Knit and Crochet Group, Sister Annette is sharing here. You can come in on uh, this coming Tuesday and be part of that, uh, that group this coming Tuesday. Amen? Amen. The last thing that I have for you today is um, uh, the, the birthday of uh, little Curtis Albert, uh, Zachary Curtis Albert. That's uh, the grandson of... Uh, 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 Sister Debbie Albert, and uh, we have a bank here if you'd like to share a gift, a financial gift to bless uh, Lord Curtis or Lord Zachary. It is our pleasure that you can do that. You can send your donations here uh, to Trinity United Methodist Church and earmark them for uh, little baby Zachary, and we'll get them to the right place. Amen? Amen. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, to our, in our call to worship, we shall uh, share together. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountain, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How precious is your unfailing love, O God, People take refuge in the shadows of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink for, from your river of delights. For with you is a fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Continue your love to us, to those who, who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. Let us pray. Gracious and all-wise God, 
To you we give glory, dominion, power now and forevermore. God, we're grateful that you have allowed us to come here today, January the 16th, Sunday morning, to worship you. According to your word, it says you're looking for those who will worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray this morning that we might be counted among those who will worship you in spirit and truth. We invite your spirit this morning, the spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, to move in this place, to move in and through our lives. Unite our hearts and our minds together that we might be on one accord. We bless you and give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you will join with me in our opening hymn, my sisters and brothers in Christ, we're going to sing a favorite of mine, hymn number 347, The Spirit Song. Join with us. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Man, that is a favorite of mine. Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs. If you will join with me, uh, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, I love this time that we spend together. Join with me as we pray, as we go to God. Gracious God, thank you for this time that we get to share uh, with the young people. We pray, God, that your uh, spirit and your power might speak to their hearts today. Speak to my heart as I share uh, what I believe you have given to each of us. Bless our time together like only you can. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, this is uh, uh, what we consider uh, a, a spiritual gift message. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but each one of you have been given uh, a spiritual gift. If you name the name of Jesus, if you love Jesus, you have been given uh, a spiritual gift. In many cases, we have more than one spiritual gift. There is one that we're stronger in, we work stronger in than in others, but for the most part, you have at least one spiritual gift. Every single one of you, if you love Jesus with all your heart. So our, our, our writings this morning, the writings, the, the scripture this morning comes from uh, 1 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verses uh, 1 
uh, and 4 through, through 11. Verses 1 and then 4 through 11. This is what it says for us this morning. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Verse 4 says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one of them, the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given the Spirit of a message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between the spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still another, to another still, the interpretation of tongues. And all of these are the work of one and the same spirit. He distributes to them each one just as he determines. This is the word of God for the young people of God. Thanks be to God. For a few minutes, I want to talk, uh, talk real quick about uh, the spirits in our worship, the spirit in our worship and work. So I, I've said that each one of you have a spiritual gift. One of the challenges with us is to figure out what our spiritual gift may be. What, has anyone ever shared with you what your spiritual gift may be? I'll tell you a real quick way to, to figure that out. What does your heart draw you to? What, what does your heart want you to do, whether it's in the church or outside of the church, but primarily in the church setting? What are you, what are you excited about? That's probably the area that you should be working in, whether it's uh, being an usher or whether it's uh, uh, serving at the front desk or whether it's giving or whatever the case may be. Wherever your heart is drawn to is a quick way to understand uh, what your spiritual gift is. So in our lesson today, the Apostle Paul was talking with a group of folk who were uh, actually wondering themselves, what, what, was the, what was my gift? What is the best gift? And so Paul uh, shares with them, he enlightens them, he gives them some clarity about the gifts that they uh, were having. Now, one of the things that they were doing, my young brothers and sisters in Christ, is they were in competition with one another. They were competing, saying that my gift is better than his, or my gift is better than hers, or our gifts are better than uh, yours. There should never be that kind of notion in the church setting. We ought to never compete with one another in that way. And so Paul clarifies for them. In verse 1 he says, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. I want you to know what they are. And then he says in verse 4, There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So he says to them, there is unity in these gifts. Then he says in verse 5, there are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. So there is unity in the service and, uh, or using the gifts. And then he says in, in verse 6, there are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one of them, it is the same God at work. So he ties all of this together and says, it is God who has given you the gift. It is God who has blessed you with the gifts and they should be used to glorify God. That's what our gifts are used for. And then he continues, if we jump way down in verse 7, he says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. And so he simply says, you ought to take your gift and use it in the local church to bless God and to lift up the body of Christ. That's what we've been given these gifts for. And he says that, and not only that, he says, to one is given the message of wisdom, to another the message of knowledge, to another the, the same spirit gives faith. And he lists out all of these gifts and he says to them that, hey, these gifts ought to be used to glorify God. So if you have a spiritual gift or if you know what your spiritual gift is, your gift should always, our gifts should always be used 
to bless God and to lift up the body of Christ. That's what they're given to us for, not for competition. And that's the Spirit's work in our worship and in our, in our uh, worship, the Spirit's uh, work in our worship and in our world. The last thing we want to say is this in verse 11. He says, all of these are the works of one and the same spirit. And he distributes to each one just as he determines. So we have these gifts and they've been given to us and they've been given to us just as the Lord God has determined. He hasn't said, hey, you have to have the same gift as that person or this person has the same gift. No, he says, each one of us have been given a gift the way that God determines that we should be given. And so we bring them into the church, the spirit in our worship and in our work. Amen. Amen. We continue, my sisters and brothers in Christ, to uh, worship God through God's word. If you will share with me what God is doing in and through us as we close out this session for our young people. Let us pray, young people. Gracious God, thank you for the gift of giving, for the gifts that you've given to each of us. Bless these young people so that they might know that they have been blessed with a gift to work in your church. Help us to help them to see whatever their gifts are and to use them for your glory and honor. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue to worship God's word this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 1 through 11. And this is what the Apostle Paul writes for us this morning. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus, be cursed. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one of them, it is the same God at work. Now, to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, miraculous power. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between the spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. For a few minutes, my sisters and brothers in Christ, I want to talk from the topic, from the subject, the spirit in our worship, in our worship and work. If you will join with me in our uh, opening hymn, our opening hymn is on page two, 454. Um, Open my eyes that I might see. Join with me.
Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Open my eyes that I might see. Man, that speaks volumes. The spirit in our worship and work. Have you ever uh, been given a, a spiritual gift and, uh, or a gift by someone and you've uh, kind of said, uh, I'm, I'm going to look for the perfect gift. And then looking for the perfect gift, you, you, you find that gift. And, and when you give it to the person, they don't receive it in the same manner by which uh, you had searched for it or by the same manner in which you have intended for it. That's what we're dealing with today. Let us pray. Gracious God, you love us beyond our abilities to even imagine. You've graced us today with gifts by your spirit and power. You've graced us with gifts that we might impact the church, the local church. By your spirit and your power now, open our hearts and our minds that we might receive your word with gladness and joy, that we might be able to see what it is that you see. And not only that we might be able to see it, but that we might find application here in Trinity United Methodist Church. That one, the that you might be glorified, and two, that the body of Christ might be lifted up. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So you've searched for this perfect gift, and you've, you've found it. You, you thought that this was, this, this was it. This was the greatest gift that anybody, anyone could ever have and you've given it to the person and they just disregarded it like it was nothing. All of the work that you poured into searching for the perfect gift, all of the, the, the emphasis that you had placed on this, this has to be the perfect gift for that person. And they discounted it like it was nothing. That's what we're dealing with today. The Apostle Paul is writing to a group of people, the Corinthian church, and he's writing to them to address uh, this, their understanding or their misunderstanding of the spiritual gifts that they've been given. These gifts were given to them by, by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit of God, and they were to uh, produce uh, works in the church, in the local church. They were to impact the local church. But these folk were competing they were competing with one another, saying, my gift is better than your gift. And your gift is not as great as mine. And I have been given the gift of prophecy. And so I, I know what's going to happen futuristically. And Paul clarifies for them because they have what I understand is the gift of stinky thinking. Stinky thinking. They're thinking wrong. They're not thinking right. And so Paul clarifies for us this morning uh, several things. He brings clarity to what the gifts mean and who's given the gifts and what the gifts are distributed to us for. And he says this in verse 1 of chapter 12. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. In some versions it says, I do not want you to be ignorant. And he's not using the word in a derogatory sense. He's using it because he loves them. He loves the church and he's giving them essential information, understanding, helping us to understand why we have these spiritual gifts and what they're to be used for. And he says to them in verse two, you, you know that when you were pagans, somehow you uh, or, or somehow or another you were influenced or led astray by mute idols. He says, when, when you were part of the world, when you were outside of the love of God, when you were outside of the church, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. You, you remember how you went in the woods and you got a piece of wood and you carved it into an image or you took a piece of clay and you molded it into an image or you took some metal and you bend it into an image and you begin to worship that image knowing that that image couldn't help you. Remember that? That's what he says. He recalls to them, he brings to their remembrance when they were outside of the umbrella of the protection of God. He says it caused you to do stuff, caused you to talk to a piece of wood or talk to a piece of metal or talk to a piece of clay that could not help. 
They could not assist us in doing anything. He says, therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit says Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. He says, therefore, I want you to be, I want you to know, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that, that you, 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 you need to know that this is important information, that no one can, can say that Jesus is Lord except by the power of the Holy Spirit except they be led by the Spirit. In other words, our confession of faith, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as members of the body of Christ, our confession of faith as Christians is we are led by the Holy Spirit. And being led by the Holy Spirit, we are led to do good works. We are led to do good things. We are led to do no harm. We are led to love God with all our heart. That's our confession of faith. That's what he says to the Corinthian church. That's what he says to us this morning. He continues to enlighten us. And he says that, you know, there are, are unities of the gifts. The gifts are, are, are put together for this reason. There is unification in the spiritual gifts. Not only is there unifications, but there is unity in the source that they come from. Not only is there unity in the source that they come from, but there is unity in purpose. The reason we have the gifts. Now, every single person in this assembly, every single person in this place who loves Jesus have been given a spiritual gift. You may have more than one spiritual gift, but those gifts are given to us by the Spirit of God so that we can impact the local church. Every single person. Here is our challenge, though, to figure out, my sisters and brothers in Christ, what is our gift? What is my spiritual gift? How, how, how am I supposed to use that gift? Paul enlightens us this morning. He says there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. So there is unity of the gifts. And he says in verse 5, there are different kinds of services, but the same Lord. There is unity of the source, in other words. The same Lord gives the gifts. The Lord Jesus Christ, in other words. And then he says in verse 6, there are different kinds of workings, but in all of them and in every one of them, it is the same God at work. In other words, there is unity and purpose. Our gifts, my sisters and brothers in Christ here in Trinity United Methodist Church, our gifts ought to be, be util, utilized for the same purpose. We ought to be, be impacting the local church, inside the church setting. We ought to impact one another's lives by the spiritual gifts that we've been given. That's what he's saying. They're given to us by the triune God so that we can impact the local church, so that we can impact one another's lives. And he says, here is the good news in all of this. He says, we've been given these spiritual gifts, and the reason that we've been given them is because there is a divine source. There is one who distributes them to each of us and he distributes them just as he wills, just as God wants to. It's good news that every single believer in Christ Jesus has a spiritual gift. He didn't leave anyone out. Verse seven, he says, now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. The manifestation of the spirit for the common good. In, in, in other words, he says, my brothers and sisters in Christ, that every spiritual gift is given by the Holy Spirit to benefit the local church. That's what the common good is saying. To benefit the Christian congregation here at Trinity United Methodist Church. It, it, we have these gifts, whether it's the gift of teaching or the gift of preaching or the gift of healing or the gift of, of faith. We're going to talk about them and, and how they look and how we are to impact one another's lives. He said they're given for the common good to impact the local church. And then he says this in verse 8, to, to one there is given the, the spirit of the message of wisdom. Wisdom is simply how we use God's word in our everyday living. All of us ought to put God's word to work in our everyday lives. But there is one person, there is someone, maybe more than one, in this ministry who has the gift of wisdom, who is able to share with the rest of us, hey, this is how God's word works in your life. He says to another, the knowledge. 
by the same spirit. It says to another faith by the same spirit, to another gift of healing by the spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between the spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and still to another the interpretation of the tongues. It says someone in this ministry, someone has faith, the gift of faith. And it's not saving faith. It's not the faith when we initially ask God into our lives and we are saved from sin and death. But this is the kind of mountain moving faith, the kind of faith that says, hey, you know what? No matter what happens in my life, I'm going to trust God. There is someone, there may be more than one in this ministry who has that type of faith where they are able to, to speak to us about trusting God, continue to trust God no matter what happens to you. He continues to say, he says that someone has healing faith. And someone has miraculous power. I love that miraculous power. And you know what that miraculous power means? It's not miracle working power in the sense that we lay hands on someone and they're healed or, or we are able to, to perform miracles. What it says is it's restoration of life. That you're able to speak words in someone's life. You're able to, to speak to someone who has maybe fallen away from the church. And you're able to go to that person and share with them, here is what I believe God is asking of you. Here is what I believe God wants me to share with you. And that person will receive that word and say, yes, you know what? I need to get back in shape. I need to get back into the church setting. I need to, to give my life back to Christ. He says there is prophecy. Distinguishing between the spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues and interpretation of the tongues. But then he says this in verse 11, and I love this about verse 11. He says, in all of these are the work of one and the same spirit. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And he says, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. All of these gifts have a divine source, in other words. All of these gifts that we have, whether it's preaching or teaching or healing or prophecy or, or distinguishing between the spirits or speaking in tongues or interpretation of the tongues, all of these gifts, my sisters and brothers in Christ, have a divine source. The Holy Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus. And he says this, the Spirit determines who and where and when he's going to give the gifts. And, and, and he says to us, hey, so therefore there should be no jealousy in the church like it was in the Corinthian church. Talking about my gift is better than your gift and all of that sort of nonsense. And he says, no, there should be not one hint of jealousy or one hint of rivalry in the church. We're all on the same journey, my sisters and brothers in Christ. We're all doing the same and involved in the same missionary work of Jesus, the same mission work of God. And so in our relationship with one another, we grow in Christ because God has given us these gifts so that we might lift one another up, that we might impact the body of Christ. We're not even talking about impact in the world. He helps us to understand today that when we love Jesus and that when we love the church, when we love the body of Christ, there are gifts that we've been given so that we might impact the world, impact the church, impact one another's lives. And he says that this is a spirit in our worship and in our work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will join with me, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we share together in our hymn of praise. A hymn of praise is a great one as well, great song. It comes from the faith we sing in 2223, hymn number 2223. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love.
Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let us affirm our faith, my sisters and brothers in Christ. The uh, affirmation of faith is the Apostle Creed. Let us share together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quicken and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue to share, my sisters and brothers in Christ, in our offering. We are, are blessing God through our giving. The Bible submits to us, and I believe this with all my heart, that God loves a cheerful giver. And so we invite you to share your gifts of tithes and offerings. You can mail them here to Trinity United Methodist Church Attention Financial Secretary in King George, Virginia, P.O. Box 155-224-85. Those of you who are not members of Trinity, but you will love to give, we absolutely welcome your giving and you may share. You may also go online and share at www.trinitykg.org and you will find a portal that you might be able to give electronically. And so any one of those ways of giving is acceptable and we appreciate your giving. We glorify God uh, in and through your life. If you will join me in our doxology as we give glory to God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Joys and concerns, my sisters and brothers in Christ. This is a time where we get to share what God is actively doing in each of our lives. And so I, I love sharing what God is doing. I, I will share this with you. I need you to pray for me. I am uh, about 15 days away from my interview with the Board of Ordained Ministry. And so that interview will take place on uh, January 31st at 2.15 in the afternoon. I, I need you praying hard for me, praying for me. I say hard, uh, tongue in cheek, I need you to pray. Pray for me that um, I interview well and that I, I get to be uh, confirmed or ordained in June at June's annual conference, amen? If you'd like to share something with us, a joy or concern, a birthday, an anniversary or or you have a prayer request, you can reach us here at trinitykg at verizon.net or you can email me directly at kevinelmore at vaumc.org. Let us hear from you. We'd love to share in your life what God is actively doing, active, actively doing in and through your life. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, you always remind us of how good you are by the way that life is presented to us. We see your goodness in every area of our lives. You've given us a, a, a life that we might be able to impact the world around us, that we might lift up the body of Christ, that we might glorify your holy name in and through our living. Lord, bless us like only you can, Bless us with our birthdays and our anniversaries. Bless us, God, as we maneuver through this life, through this time-space continuum. Bless us in ways that we might know that it is no one else but you. And no one could have done this. No one can do this. No one can, can keep us like you can. Lord, we love you. We praise you and give you glory. We share this prayer together that unites our hearts and our minds that we might be on one accord. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We praise God, my sisters and brothers in Christ, as we uh, share together in our closing hymn. We're going to share uh, in another favorite of mine. I'm going, uh, I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. Hymn number 333, 333. Sing with us. Amen. Praise God. I love that final. It says, I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I love that. Our benediction, my brothers and sisters in Christ, our closing benediction that we've learned over the years is a prayer as well as a blessing of the people. And so we bless God uh, for one another. Let us pray. Praise you, almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for the gifts that you've given to each of us by your spirit and your power. Help us to see and to feel and to hear your spirit speak to us. Bring your presence closer to us, that as members of the body of Christ, we might impact the local church for your cause. By your spirit and power, make us one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. We bless your holy name and give you glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.